only one candidate fighting for us in 2016. Bernie or bust. Bernie or bust. Bernie or bust. In 2016. Bernie or bust. Bernie or bust. This is your boy Robert Brown with B or B TV. How you doing today? Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for participating. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, I enjoy doing this and I enjoy the feedback. And um, uh, but let me get to some brass tax business today. I want to kind of chop down some um, what they call sacred cows. Uh, one of the sacred cows is um, this three million dollar. I mean, this three million more votes than Senator Sanders. Sanders. But before I go into that, I want to talk about the state of the race. But I thought it was interesting to put this on video. Um, let me see. Where do I want to start? <laughs> All right. For delegates, understand this because there's some false teaching, some false education, or some false things going out about the super delegates. Now, at the beginning, the reason Hillary Clinton got majority of the super delegates, about 500 plus, on her side is because when she started to run, she had nobody to run against her. It was basically the coordination of the queen. So automatically, those people pledged to her because there was no contest. So of course, it's a smart thing to do. Go ahead and allocate, go ahead and make your, um, stake your claim that I'm gonna be for her. Nobody knew if somebody else was going to get in the race, matter of fact, a lot of people wasn't even expected it because who's going to go up against the mighty, mighty Clintons? Uh, but that was not the case. Senator Sanders always uh, put yourself in the position, put people in a position where they need to uh, toughen up and broaden their stance and sharpen their axe. Um, but he saw some things that were going on in America that he said, I cannot just sit idle by and not run. And he knew it was smart not to run on an independent ticket. Because unfortunately, much as I love Jill Stein, much as I love Jill Stein message, much as I love the fact that she want to partner uh, with Senator Sanders, she has no message going out for everybody here. And she has an incredible message, an incredible platform. But nobody can hear her voice because she's running independent. Had Senator Sanders did the same thing, Nobody would have heard his voice. He wouldn't have the populist message that he had right now. He was, wouldn't have the popularity. His popularity is sky high, while Clinton and Trump popularity is on an all-time low. He, he's packing out stadiums like a rock star. And everywhere he go, crowds just gather. Had he ran as an independent, this would not be so. So it was smart for him to run on a Democratic ticket. Besides, even though he was a, uh, he's a, um, an independent senator from Vermont, he always considered himself more on the Democratic side. He always, almost always aligned himself with Democratic values, and he caucused it with the Democrats. So he's virtually a Democrat without the Democratic title. Now, for, you, so for you, all you guys who say, well, he's not really a Democrat, whoa, 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 whoa. This, that's like saying he's not really a Christian. Just because you claim to be a Christian doesn't mean you're Christ-like. And just because you claim to be a Democrat doesn't mean you believe you have Democratic values. Matter of fact, majority of the Democratic Party leaders right now have left the Democratic Party and they lean more toward the Republican Party. You look at their values, their stance, what they voted for, the things they promote, most of them getting donations for corporate um, um, donors, they're what we call corporate Democrats. They're not Democrats no more. Because the original Democratic was a part of, well, I'm not gonna talk about original Democrats because a lot of original Democrats was more racist. <laughs> you know, Republicans were more like the progressive um, wing of that day. That's why Dr. Martin Luther King was a, uh, a Republican. Uh, but if you look at the Democratic base now, you wouldn't even recognize it from the Democratic base before Clinton got in office. The Democratic base when um, Carter was in office was a base for the people, by the people. Slowly but surely when Bill Clinton got in office, it was going from for the people, by the people, started leaning to the corporate class. And right now, the DNC and the Democratic Party is totally majority of it is corporate-centric Democrats. 
and they have left the people, and now they're neck and neck, running neck and neck, side by side, in this race to win big money right along with the Republicans. You can't tell them the difference. Now, saying all that, Bernie Sanders is more Republic, more Democrat than any of you Democrats that's running today. So for every one of you who run your mouth talking about, I don't think he's really Democratic, I th he's really an independent. In, in value, in action, in vote, in stance as a politician, match his record with yours, he is more Democratic than you on any good day. So stop that. Second, once he got in, his message started getting out. Automatically, the news networks are going to still make it look like that all the superdelegates are with Hillary Clinton. That's not so. It's not so. You really won't know until the vote day. So you will continue to see 500 plus. Now, slowly but surely, Bernie is chopping 30, 40 on his side. But just because those numbers are up there on her side in the flashing light doesn't mean that they're committed to her. Majority of them, well, let me get into this a little bit more. Remember, superdelegates cannot be used for clinching the nomination in the primary. They only can be used for clinching the nomination at the Democratic National Convention. I will repeat to you, since you may not have heard me, get the sugar dead out your ears, the wax, whatever, and listen to me again. Superdelegates cannot be used for clinching a nomination until the vote take place at convention. So MSNBC, CNN, and all use news networks, you, your corporate-centric news network who's donated money into the other person's pocket, you know who I'm talking about? You're wrong and you're suppressing the vote and it's downright illegal for you to sit there and put the superdelegate counts and add them up with the pledge delegate. Nobody is pledged. The superdelegate count does not go in until conventions, and you can't, and you know you can't count those. And if you guys don't watch it, you're going to try people slapping lawsuits on you for false advertisement. Now, again, superdelegates cannot be used pre-convention. So stop showing them on your news network. You're supposed to take them out of the equation and only count players delegates. Super delegates um, are awarded. I mean, awarded super delegates. So let me put it this way: awarded delegates. Now, let's there. Yeah, let me move off super delegates. Let's talk about pledge delegates. Pledge delegates. You earn those when you compete for um, the presidency or a primary. And if you win a state, you get a certain amount of pledge delegates. Uh, we're not like the Democrats or not like the Republicans, where it's winner take all. There's a split sometimes based on a percentage of your win. So, for an example, if Senator Sanders win California by 60 percent, he get all the players. De uh, he get the players delegates, all, almost all of them, which put him in the lead. Um, oftentimes, um, Secretary Clinton she won states and she got a percentage. You know, you look at New York on uh, how um, even though three million independents were shut out from voting at all. And even though 500,000 people were purged, mainly in Brooklyn, who couldn't vote because all of a sudden their name wasn't on the roll, that gave Ms. Clinton the, the edge. So as a result of that, she won most of the pledged delegates. It came neck and neck, though, but she won most of the pledged delegates. Now, just because they're pledged delegates don't mean they will be awarded to you. The only way they're awarded to you is when you rally your base to be the biggest crowd at the state convention. If you don't have the biggest base at the state convention, your so-called awarded delegates or pledged delegates that you won in that state primary can still lean over and go to the other person. And he can end up or she can end up with your so-called awarded delegates. It will actually be awarded to them because of the base that took over in the votes at the state convention. So um, awarded do not mean it's officially yours until the state convention. I mean it could be called for Clinton 
It could be called for Sanders based on the support that you have at the state convention. See, this is what I don't understand about people. They don't understand politics. You know, I, I love politics. It's not just about voting. <laughs> voting is just one part of the phase of winning an election. There's after the vote, state convention, you know, uh, going to the um, uh, national convention, cashing your votes, things like that. Um, real delicate count. Let me talk about that right now. Because like I said, the news networks are lying to the public. They're adding the super delegates with the players delegate to make you think one politician is closer to clinching than the other one. That's not true. Super delegates cannot be added. And um, actually, I mean, if you wanted to, you can um, file charges for somebody, false advertisement, and you also can do it for suppressing the vote. Because when you see that Donald Trump is about 50 away from clinching the nomination, you don't want to go vote for Kasich, um, Cruz, or nobody like that because, well, he's almost dead, man. Those guys, they got three, 400 away. He's almost 50. So is that going to make you go out and vote? No, it's going to suppress the vote. You're going to figure he got it. That's why you have a politician sit there and say, I basically won the election. No, you have not basically won the election because the election still got, we got seven more states to go. And then you still got to fight for your base at the convention. So it doesn't just start with just voting at the voting booth. It, well, it starts with voting at the voting booth, but it doesn't end there. Now let's talk about real delegate count. We got to exit out the um, super delegates. They don't count to convention. You know this, everybody know this, smart people know this. People who know politics know you can't count that. Here's the real delegate count. As of today, Hillary Clinton got 1,770 pledged delegates. Now, Bernie Sanders had 1,500. So right now, Hillary Clinton, the known name for decades, the darling woman, who everybody know her. Even, here's this man coming from 60% behind, and he's almost 50% caught up with her now. She has 54% of the votes, I mean, of the delegates, and he has 45%. That's close, very close. Now what happens at these state convention is the delegate counts keep getting picked up based on the base, who shows out the most, cries the most, yells the most, vote the most at the state convention, end up taking the delegates that somebody may have won in the election. So just cause it's yours, doesn't mean it's gonna be yours forever. So you look at the state of the race, 1770, Hillary Clinton, Sanders 1500. Now, a lot of those delegates, probably about, um, let's just talk about New York for an example. Now, now let me just go back to um, talking about this thing called pledge, um, I mean, closed primaries. Majority of the states, um, the DNC had to work hard to close primaries in most of the states. They worked super hard. Debbie Wasserman Schultz says she wanted to even close more states to keep other people from voting. And do you hear what I'm saying? You got Democrats saying they want to close the primaries to keep other people from voting. She says she needs to do that to keep people who has a grassroots movement from taking over their plans of having a certain elected electorate to become president. That is unconstitutional. When have Americans decide to shut the doors of voting? Yep. The Democratic National Convention doing it. The Democratic National Committee do it. The DNC, which is run by Debbie Wasserman Soaps. She is working overtime to keep Democrats to be the only person to vote for Democrats. And this doesn't make sense because to lock the vote like they did in New York, the time to change your vote was way in October before anybody got any traction in running for election. So independents like me could not vote, but I was smart enough to get my vote switched. Because this is, I, I love politics, so I check into stuff like this. The average person don't. So when they go to the voting booth, they realize they can't vote for that person because this is a closed primary. That is unconstitutional. That is un-American. That is not democracy. We don't do that in America. Russia can do that. Some foreign country, dictatorship country, they can do that because they take full control. 
And what makes it even mad and what pisses me off even more is because we pay our tax dollars for them to fund these elections. It's not coming out of their pocket. So David Wasserman Schultz, if you want to close the primaries, pay for it yourself. Get it from your corporate donors. But don't take the people's money who's paying taxes and tell them they can't vote for your particular candidate or anybody who want to run against him. That is not democracy. That is oligarchy. You're trying to crown somebody who you want to run. So you close the primaries. And that's why it was smart for um, Sanders to run on the ticket with the Democrats, because right now, he's chipped off against about 30% of that base. Hillary Clinton only has 70%. She polls badly with independents, and Republicans can't stand her. So going in a general election, you're going to get creamed because you only can get a certain percent of Democrats. You, you can't get nobody else. And you're losing them by the droves. Because you got 30% saying, I'm burning a bus. I'm not. If she win, screw her. If he does not get to um, 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 win the general, I hope he run independent. I think that's a smart thing to do because according to the numbers, he will win. He'll clean, he'll clean both on clock if he run independent. My thing is stop trying to get them to love you. Stop kissing up them, trying to get them to accept you when they don't, and run third party because you will win. So now, you look at the delicate count now. It's very easy for Sanders to catch up and get more pledged delegates. How? By you guys in California, you did your thing. I heard the last day of registration, the change of registration over in California, over 500,000 people switched over to um, put themselves in a position where they can vote in this open primary. That is huge. I, I didn't think my video called Switch for Bernie would get out that big, but I guess it did. <laughs> Now, I'm going to take credit for it, you know. So, um, now, 60% blowout on Bernie Sanders' side will cause him to pass Hillary Clinton and take the lead. 60% plus, like he did in Washington State, like he did in Alaska. These were blowouts. 60%, 70%. Uh, I think uh, Alaska was 80%. Blowout. If he gets 60 plus, he will take the lead. Now let me go back to this this so-called um, uh, talking point that Hillary has that I got three million more votes than Senator Sanders. That is fabricated. That is not true. If you look at the caucuses of some of these states, Bernie Sanders won by a landslide. The caucuses' votes do not count. It should, but the networks don't count them. It should count, but the networks don't count them. So he blew out the caucuses state. Landslide. Hillary Clinton have not had a landslide. New York, they think, was a landslide, but it wasn't. He has 70 to 80 percent landslide victories in these states. So that right there alone lets you know that your numbers are off. It's not three million. Secondly, again I said before, close primaries. The job is to close the primaries, and if I can close the primaries, I can get this guy from winning. Why? Because if you have closed primaries, independents like me are not allowed to vote. And in New York, three million independents, three million independents, but they couldn't because this was a closed primary, only Democrats could vote it in this primary. But yet they're going to take your money, independents, and fund this thing but tell you you can't vote until we want you to vote for us in the general. I say to you, if you don't let me vote for you in the primary, you don't get my vote. Now again, I stated to you that at the beginning of the, uh, in the middle of the summer, or no, the middle of, about this time last year, Hillary Clinton announced that, hey, guess what, you saw the commercial. I tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm running for president. She made the big announcement over here um, near Roosevelt Island she had the big H with the arrow. It was pretty cool. Give it to her. And um, she announced that she was running for president. Because she didn't have nobody to primary against her, automatically the superdelegates went to her. People think that all the superdelegates just love her and flock to her. No, it was automatically given to her because she had nobody to primary her until lo and behold, here come Bernie Sanders a few months later challenging her. 
Now, did they be fair and ask around, did any of these super delegates which were allegated to her are going to be working with Sanders? No. So contrary to what you believe, those super delegates do not belong to her. And that's why I keep telling you, the news network are fooling y'all. They're using this as a propaganda tool to get you to think that somebody's winning when they're really not. Super delegates do not vote for their particular uh, nominee until the convention. I repeat, super delegates do not get to cast their votes until the convention. And right now what's going on is the news media, the liberal media, the corporate media is dictating to you how you should vote because they're putting the, the super delegates on her side, which is not true. Again, the only reason the super delegates is tagged behind her because there was a point in the um, beginning of the race she had nobody to run up against her. And here comes this old 70-year-old man from Vermont, from um, hometown Brooklyn, comes in, and they don't ask the question, are you going to go with Bernie? They just assume all of them are going to go with Hillary. And that's why her count is higher and his count is lower. So that's why she has those uh, delegates. Now, I was told that if you ask them privately, you can get about 60% to say, I don't know. I'm not going to say I'm for Hillary or not. I'm not going to say, because when I cast my vote in, she had nobody. But now Bernie is in the race. I'm going to reserve my decision. And that's true. All of them have to reserve their decision. Yeah, they talked they talk before when Obama was running, and it was all for Hillary. And then all of a sudden, when it came down for Casting that vote, they all went with Obama. 70% of those delegates said they would not cast a definite vote for Clinton or Sanders until the convention. So stop assuming, this is what I was told, that behind closed doors, majority of them are not ready to cast their vote. They have not picked a side, even though people think they are. Some have, some um, went for Sanders, some went for Clinton, some have not. Uh, now, lastly, super delegates. Their main objective is that if the rates get so close like this, see, here's the real deal. Senator Clinton, I mean, Secretary of State Clinton does not have enough pledged delegates to clinch the nomination alone. She's going to need the superdelegates. Bernie Sanders have cut into her lead where he stopped her from being able to clinch it all by herself. This thing goes convention, goes to convention. So he doesn't have enough. She doesn't have enough. It's not going to be a landslide. Nobody's going to clinch this thing with just pledge delegates alone. They're going to need the super delegates. Now, what do both of them have to do? Both of them. Hillary thinks she don't have to do it, but she has to do it. Both of them have to state their claim with the super delegates why they are the most strongest position candidate to run up and not only run up against Trump, but beat him and beat him badly. Currently, right now, Sanders is that person. Now, these are the things that super delegates look at when they talk about casting their votes. Smart super delegates do not cast on their votes because uh, I'm cool with the husband or I'm cool um, with the governor. Um, no, they don't cast their votes like that. Smart, loyal to the party, super delegates look at the map. And I'm not talking about the math of pledged delegates. I'm talking about the polling map. Here's some of the things that they look at. They look at polling among the party. Who's polling well within our party? Well, we know Bernie Sanders getting about 30%. Hillary getting about 6 or 7% of the Dems. I think it's getting tougher now. Bernie may have be getting 40% and she's getting 60 Um that here's the deal that a lot, here's the things that a lot of people don't think about. If we nominate Hillary Clinton, would Bernie supporters root her on, cheer her on, and support her? Question is, nope, 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 nah, nah, it's not happening. You know why? Because Bernie supporters, uh, they hate who she is. They hate what she represents. She represents the corporate class. She represent corporate Democrats. She's represent big money interests, big pharma. She represent. She represent the um, um, the uh, fossil fuel industry. She represent uh, Wall Street. 
these are the people who they are not they do not like and that's why if bernie sanders run as a vp we will call him a sellout your sellout sir you cannot take no vp you've been preaching that we got to fight against this plan you can't beat them by joining them you beat them by defeating them so no bernie sanders supporters are bernie a bus they said no if you do not get this man the nod kiss kiss us bye bye we're going with jill stein or we'll write him in. But we're not gonna vote for her. I don't care if you put two guns to my head or raise it to my throat and hit me with a car. I'm still gonna say, I died without voting for her. I can go now. So that's not gonna happen. Now you turn the table around. Will Hillary Clinton supporters back Bernie? You doggone right. You doggone right. They're gonna back Bernie. And here's the, here's the ticket. Even if they don't, Bernie polls well with independents. These are the things that superdelegates look at. How is Bernie Sanders polling with independents? Bernie is polling well with independents. Out of the independent base, Bernie is polling over half with them. Well, how's Hillary Clinton? She doesn't even crack at 10%, baby. She's polling badly with independents. She sucks with independents because they're just like the Bernie of us. They do not like who she is and what she represents. Forget the email scandal, forget the FBI investigation, which nobody need to be running for president with those kind of scandals. They should step down. But she's so narcissistic, and she believes this should, should be hers. She is not going to step down. She'll rather hurt this country and get a chance of a Republican like Donald Trump winning this thing uh, than step down. That's narcissist. So, do she poll po well with independents? No. Nope. How she do with Republicans? Nope. They don't like her either because she's a Clinton. Even though her values, and she said it, even though she have conservative roots, conservative values, even though everything she do leans and screams Republican, Republicans not going to vote for her. So my question is, and this is the question to the superdelegates, and superdelegates are currently looking at this thing right now. How can we support this? She barely can get Democrats. She's not pulling well with independents. She's not winning Republicans. We're going to get beat badly if we don't do something about this. But because of the power struggle, the clean machine, there's going to be pressure on the superdelegates to stay with her. And I'm telling you, superdelegates, who's the weakling, you or her? Do you have the guts? Do you have the goal? Are you a real leader in this country? Are you going to let somebody dictate to, you, dictate to you what to do? Are you a puppet of Hillary Clinton? Or are you a free man who thinks on your own with your own ideas and you're making a leg legacy not for you and your family, but your constituents who you represent? Do you represent her or do you represent the constituents? Because you better make up your mind because if you don't re represent your constituents, you ain't going to have that job. And Hillary Clinton and her husband and the entire DNC ain't going to be able to get your job back. So watch yourself. Do they have any kind of baggage? Are they easy to be attacked? How strong do they stand? Do they have ability to energize the base? Now we know who has the ability to energize the base. Who has the power to bring in new voters? Who has the power to stimulate the base enough to go out and vote in huge numbers? We already know who's, who has that power. Here's some things I want to debunk. I want to knock over some sacred cows. Sad to say, my people think that, well, if we get Hillary Clinton in the White House, Bill's going to be running the White House. Nope, 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 nah. First of all, Bill got some heat with this Clinton Foundation. First of all, Bill is too tied to the boy, um, the pedophile dude, and he's going on all these trips. That's another story. Um, I'll let Trump deal with those or uh, some other network doing that. But these are current scandals that's going on with Bill Clinton. Current scandals going on with Bill Clinton, let alone current scandals going on with Hillary. And this is what's beyond me. She have all these scandals going on right now. Bill Clinton have these scandals going on right now. You got a man who has no scandals, honest, integrity. It just blows my mind how you lean towards scandalous people instead of people with integrity and honesty. It's like the world has lost its mind. It's like we're in a bizarro world. You don't vote for people who lack integrity, people who are in current scandals, people who shouldn't be running. 
You vote for honesty and people who can get the job done. Now, will Bill run Hillary in the White House? I'm going to let Hillary tell you. Tell her, Hillary. So you ask my opinion, I will tell you my opinion. I'm not going to be channeling my husband. Tell him again, Hillary. Calm. So you ask my opinion, I will tell you my opinion. I'm not going to be channeling my husband. Now you heard it from her. She said, nah, she ain't going to be channeling Bill to help her out with nothing. You got to understand that she reads Bill. She the one who wore the pants in the relationship. And the reason they're together is because she wanted to use Bill to help her get to where she's at right now. And she's doing the same thing with Obama. She's an opportunist. And she'll sit there and take it for a while. But when it's my time, you better have my back. So no, she just told you. She ain't going to be challenging Bill to do jack. Um, she said recently that um, um, our economy was great when Bill was running the office. I'm going to make Bill my economic czar. First of all, Bill is not going to be too much because you got to understand, Bill had to go through impeachment. Bill lied as a um, president. That's what they do. Clinton's lie. Well, let me tell you the truth, because that is a lie. The whole idea of Bill running the economy, of being the economic czar for Hillary Clinton's administration, that's a lie, because Bill Clinton was not responsible for the economy of the 90s. It was Robert Wright, the economic secretary under Bill Clinton, his advisor. Now, I got a question. If I'm a financial advisor and I give you all this financial advice to make this money and you made some money with me, do that make you a financial advisor? No, you're a listener. I tell you what to do and you do what I say and it'll be great for you. That's an advisor. Robert Rice advised Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton did not come up with this great economy of the 90s. It was Robert Wright. Bernie Sanders is being cordial with the media right now. Just because he don't say something don't mean he's saying something. Believe me, he's in it to win it. And believe me, when he says he's willing, he believes the people need to have somebody to vote for instead of voting against, you got to read between the lines. And when he say that I'm going to do everything in my power to keep a Donald Trump from winning, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to support Clinton. He said, I'm going to do everything in my power. He's saying, I'm more interested in giving people something to vote for, not something against. So you got to read between the lines. I'm Robert Brown, baby. Feel the burn. Burn your bus all day, every day. And continue to feel the burn. Because we're going all the way, baby. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. There's only one candidate fighting for us in 2016. It's Bernie your boss. Bernie your boss. Bernie your boss. In 2016. It's Bernie your boss. Bernie your boss. Bernie your boss. In 2016. It's Bernie your Political boss. Political assassin smashing. What tough of some action.